Well, good morning. Good morning. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Lord. Glad that you are here with us via the internet and that you have signed on. Glad that you're here. We want to open up with prayer. Invite the presence of the Lord into this place as well as into all of our homes. And so why don't we do that uh, here? Uh, again, let me remind you, turn off all the other sound uh, sources in your home. Uh, we want you to sing with us and clap with us and, and say amen to the preaching of the Word of God and pray with us, of course. And so we're just looking forward just uh, to having some time together as a church body. I know this has been uh, difficult for everybody. I know people are wanting to be in church, but until uh, we can do that, this is the best we can do, and so we're learning how to have home meetings. And uh, believe me, the Lord will meet with you there just as much as he's meeting with us right here. Amen. And so let's pray and ask God's presence into our homes as we uh, start this service. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. It's a privilege that we all can gather together now via the internet. We pray your anointing and your blessings in our home, God. I pray that you'll just Lord, touch each and every heart, Lord. We look to you, Jesus, to praise you and give you the glory. I pray that your will would continue to be done in our lives. God, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that your will be done, Lord, in this world. God, we just pray that you will praise you. We thank you for your anointing. God, we just pray that your will be done. the word minister to big hearts, God. We're going to give you the praise of Jesus, Lord. In the lovely name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen. 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 So let's sing now. Let's worship the Lord. Praise God. No matter where you may be, I know we can't be together physically, but that has never hindered the church. We can be together in spirit and in truth, and God is everywhere. Now, have you ever taken a test, and at the end, your teacher would say, well done. Well, you know, that's what I want God to say to me one day. This corona is just a test, but my God, you are the faithful saints of God are being faithful. Neighbors are coming together. America is uniting. The family of God is uniting. And you know what God's saying? Well done. And that's what I want to hear at the end of my life, don't you? Well done. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. What do you want the Lord to say?
there are people in underground churches that will never see our face. But yet that God is still everywhere and so real. And I know this morning we are faced with a challenge like we've never had before. Moms and dads, you are praise leaders at your home. Singles, you are creating the house of God at your home this morning. That's right. And it's going to be on your shoulders. And moms and dads, I hope you have your children up on their feet, teaching them how to raise their hands and worship and making a decision in each individual home. As for me and my house, it doesn't matter what comes after Corona. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and our house is going to be free. God will set us free no matter alcoholism, pornography, drug addiction, depression. It doesn't matter what you're fighting. It doesn't matter what's coming against you. In the name of Jesus, by the power of his blood, you can be set free. And as for me and my house, we're going to be free in Jesus' name.
God for the freedom that He gives to us. Amen. Amen. We want to ask you to pray for some that are sick. Uh, we want to pray for, uh, if you would, a special request for Brother Mark Cuba. That's my brother. Uh, pastors in Newport Ritchie. Uh, he'll be having back surgery uh, tomorrow morning. And so I know that he would appreciate your prayers. And so please keep him in, 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 in your prayer, Sister Peyton. Also, uh, that God will touch her, heal her hand. And uh, I know you may have some in your family that are sick and need these special prayers. Uh, we want to pray and ask the Lord to help right now and touch these that are sick. Of course, with the core coronavirus. We want to pray for all those that have been touched in some way. Amen. We want to pray that God will help them, God, that God will strengthen them. Amen. And so why don't we why don't we pray and Jesus, ask the Lord's Jesus, blessings God. upon all yes, these that are sick right now. Shall we pray together? God, we yes. Lord, Jesus, Lord, we call Jesus. upon your great oh, name. God. Uh, asking you, God, that you will touch all those God. that are God. sick in body. Lord, we know that you are healer. God, we pray, Lord, for Pastor Mark Cuba, that you will be with him tomorrow. God, that you will guide the hands of surgeons. Lord, those that are sick in body. Lord, those are friends and family members that are sick, God. We pray right now for your healing balm to flow through this nation, oh God. Touch your people, Lord, we pray. You are a healer, Lord. God, we ask you, Lord, right now to touch the people in Lord. Touch this pain, God. Heal her hand. In the name of Jesus. God, we just pray, Lord, all those that are shut in, God, that you'll strengthen them and touch them. In the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord for it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God bless you. May be seated. Let me just uh, uh, mention that because of uh, not us being able to get together, we are sending out emails to all of our Sunday school <coughs> students that they can uh, do this uh, uh, email after, after service is done um, throughout the week. And so we're trying to help supply some uh, resources to the parents, moms and dads to help with uh, Sunday school with their children. Uh, this coming Tuesday will be men's prayer. And again, it's limited to the first 10 that get there. And so uh, if you come after the 10 would have been reached, then you can pray outside the door. <laughs> we may sneak you in there. I love it. Shh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> but then uh, the following week after that will be the ladies getting together. Uh, but uh, we'll have plenty of hand sanitizer and Lysol there, so no, no, no threat there at all. And then Wednesday, uh, again, uh, at 7.30, we will be live on Facebook, and uh, you can t uh, tune in again. Friday, our youth are on Instagram live at 7 o'clock. Let's, let's hear all young people. <laughs> and so that's Fridays at 7. Uh, immediately after the services, uh, for right now, we will be uploading the service to YouTube, to our church's uh, channel, which is uh, the Pentecostals of the capital city. It takes about an hour or so for us to upload the service, and then it will be available for those of you that uh, cannot get Facebook, or uh, you can watch it on YouTube as well. We're praying, we're still believing that by Easter we'll all be able to gather together. And so we want to keep praying that uh, we see a decrease uh, of uh, incidence of the coronavirus. Yeah. And so we want to just pray for that uh, to happen here and believe in God that by Easter time we can get back to having church services again. Um, and so we'll cross that bridge when we come to that. So please keep that in mind. Saturday, April 18th is uh, Sister Charity's uh, 
bridal shower, so keep that in mind, all those that are involved with that. And uh, as we get into the first part of May, we'll be honoring our graduates from, from school. So please keep our school in, in your prayers. Uh, while you're watching, please sign in on the comments and just say, the Culps are here, the Smiths are watching. Um, where you're from, if you're out of, not from Tallahassee, we'd love to hear from you. And feel free to type amen, we'll preach it, uh, whatever you want to put there, um, commenting. It'll all help you to stay more in tune with the Word of God while the preaching is going on. Uh, also, if you go to our website, right below uh, the, the, the schedule, you'll see then online giving. Uh, you can give online as well as you can mail it in uh, to our, our residents here, 5408 Sybil Court, and that's 32309. Uh, so let's continue to be faithful with our tithes and, and offerings. I know that God will bless you for your giving. And everybody say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. All right, if you have your Bibles, Let's get into the word of the Lord. Matthew chapter 4. Turn my... Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 18. And here we read in Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 18th verse. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother in a ship, with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And then Mark chapter 2 Verse number 13. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And finally, one last scripture, Luke 9, 23. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, right. take up his cross daily, daily. and follow me. me. Amen. This morning, uh, I want to talk to us today uh, about following the Lord and I've entitled my lesson today to the church committed to follow Amen. committed to follow I think when it's times like this that's right we're gonna find out spiritually right what we're made of that's Amen. right I really think that you know uh, church we're gonna find out if we really got the goods Right. And when you don't have all the, the body of Christ around you, when you have, you know, very low contact and you're living for God and doing it on your own, right. are you still going to follow the Lord? Help oh, us, Jesus. Yes. Amen. You know, when somebody's not there holding your hand. That's right. it. Uh, so we're going to find out that we that are committed to follow will have no problem serving the Lord through right. times like this. Amen. Amen. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessings on His uh, word. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your God. word. Jesus. I pray now that you'll just anoint me and help me as I minister Jesus. your word this morning. Lord, word that every heart would be touched. Lord, Lord, we just pray, oh God, that you would just minister to yes, every home, Lord. Jesus. Everyone that's listening, God. 
Jesus. And Lord, we're going to give you the praise and give you the glory. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' lovely name we pray. Yes, Jesus. Amen. And everybody say amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Praise. One of the most well-known athletes uh, in our time is a man by the name of Tom Brady. Right. Since 2000, he has played quarterback for the uh, New England Patriots. Before New England drafted him to join their team, 198 other players were chosen ahead of him in the NFL uh, draft. Every one of those teams and their owners are wondering now how many Super Bowl wins they would have, uh, have had and they drafted Tom Brady. Some people are such fans. Fans is a short word for fanatics. Right. Yeah. Some people are such fans that they totally love Tom Brady so much that they want to know where Tom Brady is at times. <laughs> Almost a, a, a worship of him. They want to get close to him. They want to feel like they know his life. Amen. Maybe get his autograph or... Take a, take a selfie with him. And one of the, such fanatics or fans actually designed a website that you can tell exactly how many yards you are from Tom Brady at any given time of the day. I'm not going to tell you what that website is because don't waste your time. I wasted my time last night and studying and punched it in there to find out <clears throat> how many yards I'm away from Tom Brady. And it told me that I was 378,437 yards <laughs> or that I was 215 miles away from him. <laughs> well, I don't know about the accuracy of that. I don't know if Tom Brady goes around wearing a GPS on him for this guy that has created this website but if you're a fanatic you really get into stuff like that and you would like to think that you know where Tom Brady is at all times and so if you want to stalk him or whatever if you're into that and want to find him <laughs> doubtless this website probably could be used as a starting point it just shows you how people want to follow these celebrities in this world right Man. This showed me that, that some people, they're, they're not content uh, with just uh, following him on social media. They actually want to follow him around. Hopefully they can be where he's at and they can see him and be close to him. Amen. For a, a diehard fan, uh, that is really, I guess, standard operating procedure. So I began to think about if if a fan of a athlete, a fan of something that is, you know, most careers don't last that long. Right. But if a fan of something so fleeting as and temporary as sports can be, someone can be so, so intent on tracking a mortal man, how much more right. should we, as the people of That's God, right. be followers of Jesus? Amen. 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 And I'll be intent on following him. Right. Amen. Jesus calls his people to follow him. Right. Yes. Amen. But following him, I want you to understand, is more than just checking on Facebook and watching live and giving online. Following him goes far beyond that on then Sundays and Wednesdays. Yes. True followers right. want to know where Jesus is. They want to see him. They want to, to follow him. They want to look like him. They want to talk like him. They want to behave right. like him. Right. Amen. They oh. followers want to be near right. the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And so they can be with him. Amen. That's what true followers are. Right. I'd rather be a fanatic about Jesus than a fanatic about a football player. Amen. Amen. Because I'm trying to, if, if the world can do that for their 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 fans and, and their uh, one celebrities that they go after, how much more should I say? I want to follow yes. Jesus. Amen. I want to get near yes. Jesus. Yes. I want to I, I want to do everything to That's be with right. Jesus. Amen. I want to be like Him That's in every right. way. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. The best thing about this is that Jesus is not 215 miles away. No, Amen. he's not. Amen. He's as close as a That's prayer okay. to you and I. Right. Amen. Amen. You can get in contact with him at all times. And mm -hmm. if you don't need a GPS to know where he's at, That's because right. Jesus is everywhere. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you, God. Lord. Yes, he is. Now, usually in the springtime, I'm reading with all this coronavirus about springtime and weddings and things that are going on. And I'm reading about couples that are having small weddings now. Not by choice, but they just don't want to wait. And so Man. they want to get married. And they've had this scheduled right. for a long time. And so the time has come right now. And so they're not able to have large groups. But they're still getting married. We're praying for Sister Charity. Yes. Amen. Amen. She's Amen. believing Amen. God. She's Hallelujah. Asking. But we see that people are getting married. And I was thinking about weddings. And most couples will say these two words that consist of three letters. I do. To that momentous question asked by the pastor before God and witnesses. Young men and women spend much months agonizing over invitations, what colors the, is the dress they're going to be in the men's uh, tuxedos and, and getting those invitations out and, and showers and, and on and on. They spend so much time doing this. And then the couple will sign one piece of paper yeah. and say this simple <clears throat> three-letter pledge. I do. Right. Yeah. And then... Their lives change That's right. as they know it after right. that moment. And the loving couple has no idea what the future holds. That's right. right. But there they stand before God and those witnesses and the man of God. And they make a commitment of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now committed couples, they will, as they are now living together married, they will adjust. Right. And they will grow together right. through the birth of their children. Mm -hmm. And they'll have career changes. Yeah. And they'll go through times possibly even of unemployment. Right. And, uh, and then, of course, caring for each other during the aging process. Mm -hmm. right. Taking care of one another to the very end. Those two little words, I do, serve as a commitment. Right. That they will love one another till death do them part. Amen. Now when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, the disciples of Jesus Christ will have to make a greater commitment, amen, than that when they obey Jesus' call to follow Him. It will be a commitment that will cause them to stand, no, uh, they'll stand no matter what comes, no matter what goes, right. they're not going to quit. That's it. It's a commitment when they decide to follow the Lord right. that will be greater than the commitment we make That's here it. on earth. That's it. I would like to say to everybody listening today that a, cor a coronavirus is no reason That's right. to stop following Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because I made a commitment. I made a commitment right. a, long yeah. time ago. a long time ago. Amen. When I obeyed the call of God in my life That's it. to follow Him. Yes. I let down my nets and I begin to follow Him. Amen. And I'm not going to let no coronavirus right. affect my following That's Jesus. Right. I'm going to follow Him. That's it. He asked us to follow Him. Yes, he did. Notice Jesus did not say join my club. Mm -hmm. Jesus no. did not say sign up mm -hmm. for a membership. That's right. Mm -hmm. Jesus simply said to those follow me. Yes. He asked us to follow him, and we did. Mm -hmm. And we made that commitment of a lifetime. Amen. Amen. And the great Thank news you. about this is there is no such thing till death do us part. Amen. This commitment goes beyond the grave. Hallelujah. Amen. This commitment that we make in being his follower, followers will last for eternity. Amen. Jesus' first sermon and his first ministry began this way. If you want to turn to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. 
You can read about his, his ministry. And it says this, church, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the Lord's, it says here, he began to preach. Uh -huh. So we see his early ministry, he began to preach repentance. Uh -huh. Amen. Because the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Right. The rest of Jesus' life then, he expanded, uh, he supported, and he illustrated this foundational doctrine of repentance. Mm -hmm. Changing our lives. Amen. Forsaking the world and following him. And this same simple sermon will eventually condemn all who choose to follow on their own way and they reject the gospel. But Peter and, and Andrew, they knew of Jesus from their time following John the Baptist, who also preached repentance. They had no idea how much impact that this young Messiah, right. this simple command, follow me, right. would make on their lives. Amen. They didn't maybe necessarily know at that moment, but everything was about to change, church. Everything was about to change in their life, right. saints of God, if they followed him. Uh -huh. And that is the same way with you and I. Everything changes. Jeez. I'm reminded about this childhood game that we play called follow the leader right and that is where one person gets up and does something funny and goofy and everyone else has to try to to simulate and do duplicate the same thing or to follow him wherever he goes mm -hmm. well this is what god is calling his people to do the lord jesus christ is saying follow your leader Amen. and he would make that 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 statement to those that he came in contact with he would say, follow me. Amen. To Peter and John, he came up there to them in verse 19 of Matthew chapter 4. And he saith unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Jesus called these two brothers to follow him. Mm -hmm. and he did not call them to some kind of school of theology. He did not call them to some kind of school of philosophy. He did not call them to some kind of ideology. That's it. He did not call them to a bunch of a body of authoritative texts. Right. He called them to himself. That's it. Amen. He called them to a relationship Amen. with him. Yes, he did. Little did they realize where this path right. that they were being called to follow. Not to follow some kind of ideology, but to follow the person of Jesus Christ. That's right. To follow Him as Messiah. Little did they realize where the path of obedience would take them. They could not know the uh, immeasurable awe of witnessing this person being brought back to life. That's they had no it. idea what they was going to see, how a man was healed and those were raised from the grave. They had no idea but they also had no idea of the avalanche of anguish of seeing him crucified either. Amen. They were simply told, follow me. And they did so by faith. To know him is different than to know about him. Amen. That's right. A lot of people know about Jesus. Right. I probably can go to a person on the, every corner of the street. Do you know Jesus? And they'll say, yeah, I know Jesus. I know about Jesus. They may know about Him, but that doesn't know, mean that they know Him. That's right. Amen. Amen. I know about the President of the United States, but I don't know Him. Right. Neither do you know Him, unless you have an inside connection. Most of us, we just know about Him or about somebody else. We know about them. But the Bible tells us, amen, that we are to know Him. And the only way that we can truly know Him is by following Him. Many know the Bible, but they don't know Him. That's right. Amen. And He doesn't know them either. Mm -hmm. He said, I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Jesus found Peter 
He found Andrew. And they were out there casting their nets. And the Bible says that he chose them. Right. They did not choose Jesus. Jesus chose them. Mm -hmm. Makes me every time I read about the Lord choosing somebody. Makes me wonder in my own mind, God, what is it that you saw in my life? I feel humbled. I feel just in awe that God would even choose me. Amen. I didn't choose Jesus in my life. Jesus chose me. And so I owe everything to Him. That's right. When I was not living right, when I was not serving God, He began to deal with me. His great love began to deal with my heart and drawing me to Him. So I cannot pat myself on the back. Yes, I chose God. No, God chose me. Right. He chose me to become Amen. a follower. Yes, Amen. Did. But it still fell upon me to accept that call in my life. Amen. Jesus always chose people from where they were, where they're living, and He asks them to follow Him without telling them where it's going to take them. Yes. This is how the Lord does. That's it. And He promises only one reward. He told those two brothers, here's your reward if you follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Amen. They understood fishing, but now they would begin to learn about men. That's good. Now they would learn the wisdom, the heart, and actions needed to catch people That's it. for Amen. the kingdom of God. Yeah. Jesus then would change that metaphor of fishing to farming. Rather than fish for men, they again, he would call followers to respond to the Great Commission to go into the harvest. A large harvest waits those who, cho who chose to follow the Lord. Yeah. And even in this day, with the growing population, there's still a large harvest of souls Amen. that is Amen. waiting for us. There's still many fishes out in the sea of life that are waiting for fishers of men Amen. and those that will go and reap the harvest for the kingdom of God. Some people find peace in the Old Testament by knowing this concept that is in Psalms 37 and 23. Some people feel good about this scripture. I know I have gotten strength from the scripture, knowing that my steps are ordered of the Lord. Let's read it, Psalms 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, Amen. and he delighteth in his way. Right. People have received comfort from this, knowing that their steps are ordered by by the Lord. Yes. That's right. They trust, in other words, that the Lord will guide them and God will move their shoes Amen. in the right direction. If they start to go off to the wrong right. way, God's going to nudge them back. Amen. He's going to move their shoes back into the right way. But I want you to understand something about becoming a follower of Jesus. It goes much more than just trusting that God is going to nudge you when you go the wrong way. That's right. Following Jesus involves us going where He goes. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. To follow, you must get in line with right. Him. That's it. Right. That's it. You have to rely on the walking of the Lord. That's it. Not your walking and that He'll nudge you back to where you need to be. But following Jesus means you're going to let Him lead the way Amen. and you're going to walk right. in His footsteps. Right. Right. And you're going to follow Him, relying on the walking of the Lord. You're going to walk in His footprints. Amen. No nudging or steering here, folks, but walking after Him. Right. By definition, His disciples followed Jesus. They cannot do anything Otherwise, following Jesus sets a new direction. Nothing describes this daily choice 
following Jesus than the call to repentance. Followers make a 180 degree turn. Repentance from following their own ways to following yes. the Lord's. Amen. Walking in His footsteps. Living the way He lived. Yes. Following His words. When following Jesus, we need to understand that Jesus, He sets the pace. That's right. Amen. The Master calls for the pace to be set. He determines how fast we go Amen. and how slow we go. And He calls for this constant. I want to emphasize this to you. God's call in following Him is for a constant, consistent, committed, daily walk. That's right. Amen. Therefore, walking with Jesus requires patience. Yes. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight yes. and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Now look this. And let us run with patience. Right. The race that is set before us. Amen. Keeping pace with Jesus Christ requires patience. Mm -hmm. right. It's going to require that you go through some intense moments. Mm -hmm. A true follower of Jesus Christ keeps their eyes on the Lord and not the surroundings. And we do not rush to the finish line. We let Jesus That's right. set the pace. Amen. Wow, that's good. Hallelujah. I want to follow the Lord. I don't want to get ahead of Jesus. That's not no following Jesus when I get ahead of Him. Mm -hmm. But it's learning to humble ourselves and get behind Him. That's it. And to walk in His footprints. Amen. Amen. Don't rush to get to the finish line, folks. We're to run this race with patience. Right. We need to have patience, folks, through That's all it. this that we're going through in our lives. This coronavirus is really not that bad of a situation right now compared to what other people are going through. That's Unless we are really, really affected by it, us meeting in our homes, us watching online here, most of us are still very healthy and doing fine. But yet through all this, we need to realize while we're at home and maybe we are, are shut in, we can't really travel much, we're not even supposed to go, supposed to, go to work, that we still got to just be patient and realize that we're going to live for God, serve the Lord, let Him set the pace. Amen. Believe me, I want to build a church. Right. I, we want to see this church building built on Thomasville Road. Amen. But I'm letting God, God's in That's control. Right. Yes, and I'm learning to walk and follow after Jesus. And so if the Lord allows us to happen, then it, let it happen. I'm not going to get ahead of the Lord. No and so it is in your life. When the Lord, amen, you've got your plans. But if God intervenes and the Lord does something else, we've got to learn how to walk and to run this race with patience. Amen. Waiting on our Lord. Finally, following Jesus sets the purpose. He sets the purpose. The early disciples had to learn why they were called. They thought they were in on the ground floor of a new kingdom and should, should be rewarded as such, like those who get in with a new upstart building and get their stock and to see it grow. They were doing the same thing in their minds. And that thinking came from the world around them rather than truly following Jesus. They learned that their purpose was not to get rich or to be a part of a, some kind of worldly government structure, but they learned that they were to make disciples. That's what they were supposed to do wherever the Lord led them. That purpose was very clear. All the disciples had to do was to follow. Amen. King Saul in the Old Testament is not the only one who thought sacrifice would make up for a lack of obedience. Right. Paul had to inform the Roman church, as well as the church today, 
that willful disobedience to God's will is incompatible with a follower. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, right. and follow me. Amen. Following must first be preceded by self-denial. Right. Teaching today on committed to follow. Right. And so we must precede following with self-denial. Repentance. Disciples yeah. call required them to leave their nets, to leave their boats, to leave their dreams, right. to leave their plans. And Jesus taught his followers that they could not have a dual citizenship. Come on. They must choose which master that they will serve. Mm -hmm. Listen, church, leaving is not always easy. Amen. Some who considered following Jesus left the journey before they even got started. Right. They were not willing to separate from their worldly ties. Right. That's right. But following and obeying Jesus requires taking up your cross. Amen. Right. The cross call did not come with that initial invitation when he told them to drop their nets, the crosses would come later. Mm -hmm. Your personal cross, the personal crosses had to be connected then to a deeper revelation of Jesus' identity. Jesus doesn't tell us to pick up the cross. He invites us first. But as we begin to develop our relationship with God, then that's, and we begin to understand his identity, deeper revelation of who he is, that's when personal crosses come. He is both the Christ and he is the suffering one. That's right. He would graciously lay down his own life. He would inform his followers that in their hearts they too must do the same thing. Followers of Jesus, they did not stop following even when they were following alone. That's Man. it. That's good. We're practicing today yes, we are. what is called social distancing. Come on. And what that is doing is it's driving people apart. Yeah. And it's making people get apart from one another. Uh -huh. And practicing that distancing yourself. And with that separation, people across the world are feeling more and more alone. Yeah. And here's what I'm trying to wrap this message all up with. People are feeling more and more alone. Some of our elders are being told by their doctors to stay at home. Don't even go out and get anything. No. Have somebody go get it for you. Right. And so along with that, you get a little stir crazy. You start feeling alone. You want to get out and, and be around other people. And I begin to think about this. While we are socially distancing ourselves from the world and from everybody else, we must keep following even if we feel we are all alone. That's Man. That's right. No matter what. Me being at home by myself doesn't mean that I can stop following him. That's it. The Bible has many instances of people that followed the Lord even though they may have at that moment felt like they were all alone. David followed the Lord when he was all alone Amen. hiding from King Saul. How many nights did he stay in a cave or hiding in a thicket? hiding in some crevice or something, running into the mountains, fleeing for his life. Nobody was there, but he did not stop following the Lord. Amen. He served the Lord even at times when he was all by himself. 
1 Samuel 30 and verse number 6 says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. And so we see when David, <clears throat> they came back from battle, they see that all of their daughters and sons and possessions were taken away from them while they were out fighting. And now David is confronted with even his soldiers wanting to stone him and kill him. David, you talk about feeling alone. That's right. You talk about yeah. saying, you know what? I'm tired of doing what's right. I'm tired of all this. Even my, the people who I invested my life in and took them in, now they're turning on me. No, that's not what the rest of that verse says that happens. The Bible says this, but David encouraged himself right. in the Lord. That's right. It was at times when he was standing by himself that he realized, I'm still going to follow right. the Lord. That's right. Amen. And he encouraged yes. himself in the God that he was that's following. Amen. Amen. No one backing him up. David just kept following right. the Lord. That's Hallelujah. It. A man by the name of Shama knew what it was like to be alone and not to run in the face of adversity. We read about him in 2 Samuel 23 and 11. And after him was Shama the son of Agi, the Herite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where it was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people, the people fled from the Philistines. So you see, the Philistines came to go ahead and to harvest the crop for themselves that the Israelites had planted. And all the people saw the Philistines coming with their swords and their spears and their shields and their horses. And they fled out of fear. Verse 12 says this about Shama, But he stood. Shama stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord wrought a great victory. My mind goes to thinking what was Shama? What was in his heart? What was he thinking? When everyone else was fleeing and here he is standing in the midst of a lentil field all by himself, all alone. But he did not run like everybody else did out of fear of what could happen in the future. He stood his ground. And because he stood his ground, the Lord used him to bring about a great victory. Amen. Let me tell you something right now. We're in the midst of a field right now. And people are fleeing to the left and the right. That's not the time for the saints of God to flee with the world in fear. Now's the time for us, amen, to let God use us to bring about a great victory for the kingdom of God. Now's a great time for you to witness to your neighbors. Now's a great time for you to call your friends up and to invite them to watch this program, amen, to watch this service that we're having, that we can bring the word of God to them. Let's use this and let's be used of God to stand in the, in the face of adversity and see God bring a great victory. Amen. John the Baptist, he's in this dungeon ready to die. Right. But he kept standing all alone. Yes. John may have struggled with wondering why is it working out this way, but nowhere do we ever see that John stopped Believing in the Lord no, and standing for the Lord. Think about all the apostles. They all died still following yes. the one who saved them Amen. and the one who changed their lives. Amen. And so this period of separation mm -hmm. due to the health risk threat that is out there. I want us to, uh, just me again to reiterate to every one of us. Folks, we're going to get through this. Yes, we are. Amen. And there's no reason for us to stop following the no Lord. No reason whatsoever. The music will come. We are following the Lord. And we must remember to stay committed.
to our vows that we've made to God. Right. We've got to stay committed. Amen. We will live for God during this time. We will serve the Lord during this time. Even if we have to do it all by ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not asking to be alone. What I'm saying is if I am alone. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that feeling of loneliness comes to us. Maybe you're the only one in your home right now. And you're watching. And you feel alone because you're not able to come to church. And you're not able to get around the saints of God again uh, for this period of time. And you feel in, in the devil saying you're all alone. I want to tell you, you just keep following the Lord. Amen. Wherever He leads, we've got to follow us as a church. Amen. I don't know if this is a precursor to whatever. Maybe God's schooling us. Maybe He's teaching us, wanting to see who will follow Him. Amen. Even though we don't have a big group of people around us. Amen. We've got to learn to live for God, folks. Yes, right. Even if it's all by ourselves. Amen. That's right. If you were to be shipwrecked on some island, would you still serve the Lord right. all by yourself? I don't ever think that we will be shipwrecked on any island. But the idea is we've got to have in our hearts that we're going to serve God. We're going to follow Him. Amen. Regardless of where He leads us. And even if all, all alone, we will continue to stand like the many in the Word of God that stood, amen, when adversity came. We too, the people of God, this born-again church, those that have repented of their sins, been baptized in that lovely name of Jesus, amen. been filled with the precious gift you. of the Holy Ghost, with that initial evidence of speaking in other yes. tongues, Amen. Amen. We, the body of Christ, we must stand for the Lord Amen. at all times and purpose it in our hearts. I'm going to follow Him wherever He leads us. Let's, let's sing this chorus in closing. Lead me, Lord. I will follow. to be followers. Let us, Lord, in the midst of this coronavirus or any other situation that may come into our lives, let us follow you, Lord. Keep following you. Let us walk in your footsteps. Let us live like you live. Let us behave and act like you did. Lord, I pray that we will follow you to the very end, oh God. We made a commitment, God, and we are committing ourselves this day once again that we will follow you, that we will serve you. Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you, God, that you are the one that is a good master, 
one that we can follow. Our great reward, Lord, let us realize that you've also called us to be fishers of men and that we are to reap the harvest at this time. Oh God, what a great, great calling you've placed upon the church. Let us, Lord, do that. And someday, God, we're going to be with you. Lord, I don't want to just be a fan. I want to be a follower. Yes, I want to be a follower more than a fan. Lord, I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you like never before. And we ask all these things in the lovely and precious name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. amen. Everybody amen. say amen. 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 Thank you for watching today and being part of this service. Church, I want to encourage you. Let's keep serving the Lord. Let's keep following Him. Amen. It's going to be worth it all. Amen. Soon this is all going to be done with. And praise God. Hopefully by Easter. Oh, won't that be a time for us to get together and yeah. celebrate the resurrection. Amen. Praise God. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we see you again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.